you've got spots in your house where you're walking around like this looking for that darn Wi-Fi signal, well, today I've got a solution for you. You see, last time I tried to find a solution for my dead spots, I tried this thing called a power line adapter and that just failed miserably. So I reached out to the good people at Netgear and I told them my woes and they said, no, you have to try our range extender, which they sent one over to see if it makes any difference. Let's do this. And welcome to another episode of Talking Tech with the Techie Guy. My name's Liron Segev, where I make tech simple. If you're into phones, gadgets, apps, tips and tricks and how to, hit that subscribe button and let's get on to today's show. So this range extender is from Netgear, but don't worry, it works with any other router as well. So you don't have to go and changing another device just to get those things to work. Now, what a range extender does, well, it's exactly that. It extends the range of the Wi-Fi. So you bring it to the edge where there's a little bit of connectivity still, but just it just starts to get sluggish at that point. You plug in the range extender and it gives you that nice boost. I am told this one is as simple as switching it on, inserting some settings, following a little wizard, and then it's done. Well, let's put that to the test. And here she is. This is the Nighthawk X6S. It's the tri-band Wi-Fi range extender model EX8000. Link will be in the description below. Let's turn this over and on the back you'll see you've got the WPS button in case you want to synchronize this with your router that way, not through the web interface. You've got four ports for Ethernet, which is awesome. And this USB port, which is great to connect an external hard drive to this, making it a bit of a network storage device so you can save to this from anywhere on your network. You've got the power on button and when you switch it on, it starts to blink, looking to be set up. This is the first time I'm using it. Let's see what the process entails. Right, I can see a solid white light, which basically means the extender is connected to my computer now, which is great, which means I can connect to it. The 2.4 gigahertz light is now just gone on, which means that radio is operating. Now the 5 gigahertz light is on, which means that is operating as well. Okay, and under this kind of speedometer looking thing, that's the maximum throughput LED. If it's a solid white, it means I'm using the 5 gigahertz as my backhaul, which means I'm going to get the fastest possible connection over the 5 gigahertz bandwidth. Let's wait for the first light to go on. Oh, there we go. That is your LED for indicating a good or bad connection. It's solid white, which means it's the best connection. If it was amber, it will be a good connection. Red will be a poor connection. And off obviously means no connection. So visually, you know where to actually place this extender to the point that you're getting a good connection or a best connection so that you're going to maximize your Wi-Fi range from this point onwards. Okay, so we've got all the basics done. Now what? Okay, let's go to the computer. Let's connect to the extender. There we go. It is a Wi-Fi network now on as part of my network. So you can see I'm trying to connect to it. It will come up as Netgear underscore EXT as the default. Next up, fire up your web browser. You're not going to have proper internet connection at this stage, but type in myWiFiEXT.net, which connects you to the range extender directly, and let the process begin. Right, let's click on New Extender Setup. It's going to ask you for some admin usernames and password. Obviously, put that in. Once you do that, you created an account on your own system. You have a choice to make. Do you want a Wi-Fi range extender or an access point? What's the difference? Well, a Wi-Fi range extender allows you to extend your existing Wi-Fi, which is why we got this device in the first place. An access point allows you to create a hotspot, but it's got to be connected to a wired network. Okay, so we know we already want to create a range extender. So let's click on OK there. Click on Wi-Fi range extender. I can always set it up later as well, but now let's finish the process. Wi-Fi range extender. Click on that. Now here is... Okay, so the first screen that's going to say to you is make a choice. Which network would you like to extend? So which one should I extend? Well, let's click on learn more and see what the requirements are. Okay, so as long as it's got that signal strength, it should be able to boost that signal quite nicely, which is cool. So let me click on OK, and then go back to this little list. And then on the left side, my 2.4 gigahertz, I'm gonna extend my network, which is Byte. Click on that. It's a 66%, so I kind of just made it it's a little bit on the fringe. And the five gigahertz, well, that's 82%, so that's nice and solid. So that should be pretty good results. 
Okay. Now what? Next. Let's apply those settings and right enter the password. Obviously, you're going to need to enter your password, which is why you can't extend somebody else's network. Okay. Click on next. Right, here's where you start making some decisions. What do you want the new extender to be called? Do you want it to be automatically named the same as your existing Wi-Fi hotspots? In which case you can enable the one Wi-Fi name or do you want to give it its own unique name? Now, a lot of people like to enable it to be the one Wi-Fi name because I don't want to reconfigure all my devices to start with new username and password and I've got to manually change between the main Wi-Fi and the extender depending where I happen to be. Give it one name and it covers you throughout the whole property. Okay, um, looks like this is it. Are we done? Is this like ready to go now? All right, well, let's um, test it. So this is the address you remember that my Wi-Fi EXT, that's the one you need. Now that I'm connected to it, I'm gonna log in with my username and password and this is the interface. Okay, the connection is up and running. So there's my 2.4, there's my five gigahertz. It looks like a bit of a bad connection there. You know what? The first thing I always do is I always go check the firmware update because these things are shipped out to factory at a certain date with a certain software. So before I mess around with anything, the first thing I always do is check for a firmware update to get the latest information, the latest patches, the latest everything. Oh, and there we go. Sure enough, there is one here. So that's the firmware current version 1.82. That's the new one. So it looks like quite a lot of modification. So let's click on yes to update. Okay, this is going to take a little bit of time. I'll fast forward all this so you don't have to watch it. And there we go. Right, we're back. It's all set up. And there we go. You can see the connections have already been fixed. I think this is pretty much done. So now the big question is, does this actually make a difference? It was simple to set up, but does it actually work? Let's test it. Here it is with the lights all connected. Everything is beautiful and clear. Okay, and there's my link speed. You can see I'm connected to Hamesh, which is the 5 gigahertz network at 650 megabits per second is the link speed according to this tester. Everything looking cool. I'm gonna switch it off now. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, lights are off. Okay, there we go. Now let's see this should, if it makes a difference here. Wow. Okay, already it's dropped. Wow, look at that tremendous drop. It went from 650, 780, 650 down to 81 megabits per second as the link speed the second I actually switched it off. Look at that dramatic fall off a cliff. Wow, okay. Let's do the reverse testing. Let's switch it back on again, connect to the Wi-Fi and see if it should get a spike again because obviously that's what you would expect, right? Okay, switch it on. Let's do the synchronization. And wow, straight away. 780 I saw there. Sorry about the blurring there. Um, okay, 780. Well, the point is you can instantly see a drop and instantly see an increase when it connects. Even the kids have noticed that on their tablets and on their phones, I just don't get the whole, is the Wi-Fi down again? So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And as, as usual, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new and it's the first time here and you like this kind of tech, hit the head below to subscribe. Check out some of these other cool videos down here on the same topic and I'll see you over there.